In this tutorial, we are going to make a simple Bluetooth controller for a robot, using Raspberry Pi. Using GUI of client Raspberry Pi, servo and LEDs which are connected to the server Raspberry Pi are controlled. As you can see, when we move a slider in GUI, the servo moves according to the slider value and when buttons are pushed, the LED turns on or off. Also, the server sends CPU temperature to the client. Knowing how to make this kind of controllers could be useful when you need special functions for your robot. Before going into the tutorial, let us review some basic facts about Bluetooth. Bluetooth is a short-range wireless technology standard that is used for exchanging data between several devices over short distances. In the most widely used mode, transmission power is limited to 2.5 milliwatts, giving it a range of up to 10 meters. When setting up a new device, users typically go through a process called pairing. Pairing equips each device with special security keys and causes them to trust each other. Bluetooth uses the radio frequency spectrum in the 2.402 GHz to 2.480 GHz range. No specific harm has been demonstrated, even though wireless transmission has been included by EARC in the possible carcinogen list. In this tutorial, Raspberry Pi is used as a test device. But the basic procedure is also applicable to Jetson Nano and other computers. Two LEDs are connected to the GPIO through 200 ohm resistors. When connecting LEDs make sure you do not reverse polarities. As a servo, Dynamixel AX12A is used. The servo is connected to Raspberry Pi through U2D2. U2D2 is a small size USB communication converter that enables to control and to operate the Dynamixel with the PC. Since servo operation voltage is 12 volts, an additional power source is needed. The most convenient way is to use a power hub. This is the GUI on the client side. User inputs are converted to a string array and sent to the server. Every time the server receives the signal from the client, it returns CPU temperature. Any actuators such as motors, solenoids and sensors such as encoders, current sensors could be connected to the server. In this section I want to discuss how exactly data is sent to the server. For the servo, the required data is integer in range of 0 to 1023. And for the LEDs, there are only two states, on and off. So, boolean type should be enough. When sending the data to the server, we convert it to one string array. After A, goes servo data, after B, goes LED1 data and after C, goes LED2 data. For example, if servo target position is 563, LED1 is off and LED2 is on, the sending data will be expressed as A563B0C1. When the data is received on the server side, it is decomposed by regular expression operations and stored in the array. Now let's install the required libraries. Firstly, install Bluetooth. Then install libusb dev. libusb is a C library that provides generic access to USB devices. Install libdbus1 dev. dbus is a message bus used for sending messages between applications. Install libglib2.0dev. Glib is a library containing many useful C routines for things such as trees, hashes, lists, and strings. It is a useful general purpose C library used by projects such as GTK, GIMP, and GNOME. Install libudevdev. Libudev provides API for enumerating and introspecting local devices. Install libical dev. 
LibiCal is an implementation of iCalendar protocols and data formats. Install lib read line dev. The GNU read line library provides a set of functions for use by applications that allow users to edit command lines as they are typed in. Install lib dbus glib1 dev. The dbus glib package contains glib interfaces to the dbus API. Install lib bluetooth dev. These are development files for using the BlueZ Linux Bluetooth library. As all necessary packages are installed, we are going to install BlueZ. BlueZ provides support for the core Bluetooth layers and protocols. It is flexible, efficient and uses a modular implementation. Firstly download BlueZ 562 tar xz file. XZ is a popular algorithm for compressing files based on the LZMA algorithm. By convention, the name of a tar archive compressed with XZ ends with either tar XZ or TXZ. Extract the file. Extract a tar archive. Move to the blue Z folder and do configuration. Now execute make. This operation may take a while. Finally, execute make install. Also install pi blue z using pip command. We need to know the address of the server. Open a terminal and type hci config. HCI config is used to configure Bluetooth devices. This is the address. Take note of this address. To do pairing, this device should be discoverable. Move the cursor to the upper right corner of the monitor to the Bluetooth icon. Click on Make Discoverable. The Bluetooth icon begins to blink. This means that device is ready to be paired. Move the cursor on the Bluetooth icon and click on Add Device. In Add New Device, the Raspberry Pi should appear. Select Raspberry Pi and click Pair. On both devices confirmation window will appear. Click OK. With this procedure you should be able to pair Raspberry Pi. To operate Dynamixel Servo, Dynamixel SDK should be installed. Firstly, install Git. Go to the Dynamixel SDK GitHub page. Copy repository URL. Git clone the repository. Move to the Dynamixel SDK Python directory. Execute setup.py script. Now we are ready to use Dynamixel SDK. Let's test read write py script. Connect your servos to the Raspberry Pi. To make this script work with the servos, some modifications have to be done. These are the parameters we should change to make this script work with the AX12 servo we have. All these parameters are written at the Robotis E manual home page. Scroll down to the control table of EEPROM area and RAM area. Here, all addresses we need are written. For example, torque enable parameter address is 24.
for AX12A and AX18A servos, script provided with my tutorial should work. Now execute this script. If your setting is correct, the servo will move to the goal position set in the script. Now let's look at the code. These are libraries we are using. For GUI we will use TK and TUR. TK and TUR is the standard GUI library for Python. It provides a fast and easy way to create GUI applications. Here initial values of LEDs are set. In the initial state both LEDs are off. Here instance of TK is created. Also, initialization of the interpreter and creation of the root window is done. In this part scale is created. The scale widget provides a graphical slider object that allows you to select values from a specific scale. Note that initial value of the scale is set to 512 which is the neutral position of the servo. This is the part where the data is sent to the server. This is the address of the server which we obtained using HCI config command. Here we create a socket for connection. Our FCOM is used as the transport protocol. Here client attempts to connect to the server. If connection is successful, client sends servo target rotation angle and LEDs on off information based on the protocol explained earlier in this tutorial. After sending the data, client receives the CPU temperature data from the server. Label widget in the GUI is overwritten based on the temperature data received from the server. The Bluetooth send function is executed in a different thread from the main thread, otherwise it will not be possible to operate GUI while sending the data since while loop is used in this function. The thread is started when the start button on the GUI is pushed. Root main loop lets TK and TUR to start running the application. As the name implies it will loop forever until the user exits the window or waits for any events from the user. The next is server code. Firstly, GPIO pins are initialized. GPIO board means that pin numbering refers to the numbers printed on the board. This part is copied from read write pi script provided in Dynamixel SDK. As with the client, socket for connection is created. This function binds the socket to a local address and port. Here socket listens for incoming requests. Here socket accepts the connection. In this part, as explained previously, received data is decomposed by regular expression operations and stored in the array. Note, that input data for servo should be converted to integer type. Here CPU temperature is obtained by sub-process module. The sub-process module allows to spawn new processes, connect to their input, output, error pipes, and obtain their return codes. Based on the received data each LED turns off or on. Finally clean up all the ports you have used. Now we are ready. Execute server pi on the server side and client pi on the client side. 